Oh, one final thing on uh, the fourth one. The fucking shotgun through the torso, that's just ridiculous. You've got ribs there. You've got... That's just preposterous. You can do it with a knife, maybe. Especially if you find the exact right point. But just physiology, basic physiology tells you you cannot shove a fucking shot. I don't care how fucking strong you are. It doesn't make sense. It, it And it's just clearly um, to you know reference the knife going into Bob in the first one. But it's ridiculously over the top. And it's really, really cheap to keep referencing the first one, which people like. On the characters, somebody should have prevented those fucking sound effects. Cartoon sound effects to be put over the fucking cops. God, that is terrible. There's just... It is so irritating. I guess it was to like lighten to to make it not be as dark and as serious. First of all, why the fuck are you making a slasher film? But no, just you do not do that. I don't care that you're making authority figures seem weak. I mean, as you know, in in small doses, and sometimes that's fine. But if if they're so fucking bad cops, then why are they being assigned to? You know, and also now that Rachel suddenly becomes a relatively likable character, she unfortunately gets naked and gets whacked. And we're stuck with fucking Tina. This is also where uh, the man in black is introduced. And I'm gonna get more into that later. Also, the ending. Sorry, one more thing on 4. The ending of 4 was so fucking weak. Were we really supposed to believe he was gonna die? I mean, even if it was 1988 and you didn't know that another one was coming out the next fucking year, would you have believed that he was dead? I mean, the dynamite is in the beginning of the fifth one, not in the ending of the fourth one. He just falls down a hole and Luma says, He's in hell where he belongs. No, he's not. He fell down a hole. It... it I mean... Was it even as big a drop as it was in the first film? It's ridiculous. No way that would have killed him. Also, I hate to even think that this has to be said for a movie produced in English with English-speaking people. How come it's so f poorly fucking dubbed? I I think it, it might be you know mainly like screams and exciting situations, and maybe those are a little tougher in the ADR booth, but. Seriously, try harder. We can tell that the lip movements do not match the words and the sounds. Also, Michael Myers fucking cries. He motherfucking cries. He's like, what the fuck is that? Seriously, he used to be pure fucking evil. He's, you know, apparently John Carpenter for the first one wanted to make sure Michael Myers was not at all someone you could relate to. That's one of the things John Carpenter does really well. His bad guys are not relatable. They are fucking evil. Watch his version of um, of Assault on Precinct 13. Watch, you know, mostly any movie of his. In fact, I can't think of a single one where he does, you know, where the, the enemy is even slightly relatable. They're just you know, and often they're even like zombie-ish, you know, they're not, you know, just droning on and just going towards and trying to kill um, the good guys, you know. You have to wonder when he does actually make a fucking zombie movie. But yeah, he fucking cries, what is that? It's... <laughs> also, what the fuck happened to the Myers house? Are we really supposed to believe that that's the same fucking house? It very clearly is not. There is no way that is the same. And just at the beginning, just because it's convenient, because the writers don't dare go anywhere new, he goes catatonic for a fucking for 364 days until the magic timer of it's Halloween night awakens him and what the fuck, seriously, are, 
are we supposed to be buying this shit? Seriously. But yeah, he sleeps 364 days straight, apparently without moving a muscle. I guess those night-long um, killing sprees that occur every decade or so really take it out of you. Yeah, he's apparently utterly incapable of killing on any other day or night than October 30th and October 31st. Yeah. Look at this shit. They even fuck. I mean, you aren't gonna get it because it's in Danish, but that's his curse. The curse. The fifth one is the revenge, not the fucking curse. So, anyway, the ending. I guess it was to set up a, a sixth one, so let's just. This one, if I accidentally say anything that doesn't. You know doesn't make a lot of sense. I only just watched this like three days ago for the first time ever and I've only watched it once. With that being said, what the fuck was the movie about? How does it, are the scenes supposed to go together and make sense? Is it supposed to be an actual story? It's a mess. I, they, I guess they were trying to do something just I don't know, trying to expand upon the backstory with the whole Sam Hain thing. So the, you know, the man in black, and that turns out to be, um, I don't know, so apparently that's supposed to be that do the Dr. Lin something or other, that he was the man in black I don't know, at, in the fifth one who killed the, the whole station full of... Um, can, can someone explain to me why Michael Myers goes from being docile around all the, the cultists to killing the whole fucking bunch of them. So again, obnoxious characters. The the shock jock, apart from being a really good Captain Exposition, I've, are we supposed to buy that he's a shock jock? He did, why doesn't he play along when he gets the call? He sounds more like upset when, um, you know, Jamie calls, who's now been turned into nothing more than, you know, the person who comes in, um, at the, you know, at the, an early point in the 50 schlock sci-fi film, and yells, they're coming, it's him. I shit you not, that, that's what she says, as far as I remember. They're coming, it's him. Yeah, whatever. And the shock jock is like, what is this call? Are you joking? Huh? Why doesn't he play along? Isn't he supposed to be a shock jock a la uh, Howard Stern? Wouldn't he? Ah, right, yeah, they're coming. Who are they? Is it the, the, the little green Martians? Are you wearing your tinfoil hat? What? Why doesn't he play along? And Loomis is... Real quick, Joe Chappelle, fuck you. David, Donald Pleasance is not boring. Donald Pleasance made the movies at least remotely watchable. But yeah, so Loomis is apparently the um, apparently the the burn scars on his face have healed. Maybe he got reconstructive surgery, though. I can't imagine a doctor who spends most of his time going around saying he's here, he's here. You have to stop him can make a shitload of money, but, but yeah, at the very beginning, everybody is just playing Captain Exposition constantly. Um, I, th apart from the utter lack of actual substance, it's just, it's ridiculously over-stylized. It tries way too hard to scare us. All those shitty subliminal flash cuts with that, seriously, had the editor just realized you can do flash cuts, he seemed to just using them constantly, every chance, you know, those subliminal little flash cuts with the knife and the sh sh sound, it's ridiculous, it's not scary, it doesn't set a mood, it's not good, it's really, really cheap. But yeah, again, obnoxious characters, and they're not entirely credible either.